Welcome back, everyone. This is the Joyous Journeys in Life and Business podcast. Today, I am interviewing my friend, client, and just all round epic ray of sunshine, Elodie Joy, or otherwise known as Elodie Weath. Welcome, Elodie. Hi, Sharon. <laughs> lovely to lovely to be here. <laughs> so great to have you. Um, for those listening, Elodie is the founder of Sunshine Holistic Wellness. She is a holistic healer and supports people to listen to the guidance of their own inner wisdom so they can live a life that's free from stress, anxiety and worry. Elodie has a keen interest in helping to guide people home to their intuitive and energetic abilities so they can become their own sovereign self-healer. She thoroughly enjoys allowing people to see the goodness in their heart and guide people to a space of self-compassion and self-forgiveness. Being a registered nurse for six years, Elodie enjoys bringing in a science background to these spiritual practices as a way of bridging the gap between science and spirit. Elodie offers her six-week signature program, Soul School, that teaches tools to access clarity, direction, and purpose in life using science-infused spiritual practices. She is a wonderful part, a wonderful growing, she has a wonderful growing spiritual community in Queensland's Sunshine Coast region. And let me tell you, Elodie has a long list of qualifications um, to her name. Elodie, I don't know how you do it all, but really... How do you be a holistic counsellor, a life coach, a Reiki master, yoga instructor, meditation teacher, access bars practitioner, reflexologist, and a registered nurse? <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything yeah. you don't do? <laughs> it's just all wrapped up in a bundle of joy. What can I say? Yeah, I mean, like, I don't groom dogs, so that's something I could <laughs> add. <laughs> Well, I have got a friend who started a business in that too. So, you know, it, it's a thing for sure. You could add it to your list of talent. I could. Thank you so much for joining me here today. One of Thank the reasons you, I really wanted to have you on, not only because I just adore the business that you've created and that you continue to create, um, and also how much I love working with you, but I really wanted to bring you on to share a little bit more about your story because. I think there's something really beautiful in, in your story. This is the Joyous Journeys in Life and Business podcast. And, you know, you are just all about that. Um, and with a middle name like Joy, what can I say? It just it's is just epic. perfect. Um, you know, you are a believer in science and spirituality, as we've just heard. I would love you to share with our listeners about how those worlds actually collided for you and your transition from more traditional healthcare to being a holistic healer? Hmm. Yeah, great question. <laughs> and one it's that I'm quite still a long one, I know. Of... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Um, well, I've been a registered nurse for about six years and probably the first good two years of that chunk, I was very, very science focused. I was atheist you know just thought yeah like once you die that's it your worm food um and I, th I love it yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I I think in hindsight the belief in science only or that you know there was nothing beyond this physical body was a sense of control that you know because uh, anything outside of what I knew um was just so scary to sort of think um this unlimited potential of whatever there oh, could yeah. be was just huge for my little brain to sort of wrap its head around um I but I guess things started changing probably in like I don't know three or so years ago um when just things in the medical industry that I was exposed to just didn't really make sense anymore in my head that the things that I was observing at work um I was starting to see sort of um relations with 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 patients and their physical diseases that they would present to to us in hospital with um and also just you know observations like like a little scientific experiment that i was conducting within my own brain um but deep down within myself i knew i knew that 
there was something greater than just that job that I was doing. I knew I had a deeper purpose in life and I knew that it involved helping people and I wasn't getting the satisfaction that I thought I would have been um, from, from being a nurse. Mm. So, I mean, COVID definitely catapulted me into this how I am today. That was probably the catalyst for change. Um, because prior to that, I knew some things were stirring within me, but I it was easier to run away from them rather than to stop and face them. And I and I was also surrounded by a lot of my friends, colleagues, family, a very infused, indoctrinated in the Western medical system, you know, which is very scientific evidence um, approach to existence. Um, so it wasn't sort of something that I was exposed to as a, as a different way of thinking or feeling or believing, you know, what my reality could be. Mm. Um, but yeah, COVID definitely sort of catapulted me into this new way. Um, and it all started with a breathwork session that I did, a Wim Hof session and a rebirthing breathwork, it's called. Um, and those two practices just blew my mind wide open and since then it's been a sort of a, a spiraling journey of just unraveling layer by layer of, of what my conditioned programs and beliefs were um, you know placed within me unconsciously so yeah it's just been a, a beautiful journey um, and you know from from the whole brain blowed open sort of initial stage that then just made way for new experiences to come through it was like I was a little kid like seeing the world out of new eyes again just wanting new experience after new experience just to just so much curiosity um and that's when I when I discovered Reiki um mm -hmm. and that was the beginning of of me stepping into this holistic healer um role that I find myself in now yeah and what was it about Reiki that 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 had you lean into that as somebody who had been a I want to say a science-based healer I guess as a nurse mm. you know and someone who was in that more traditional medicine realm what happened when you came you know when Reiki came into your awareness that captured your attention <laughs> I want to say something super profound but literally um all it was was Reiki is a Japanese word and I studied I was obsessed with everything Japan and Japanese when I was a teenager and I remember seeing the word back then and thinking like oh Reiki that's a Japanese word that's cool and I could like write it in Japanese <laughs> and then I saw it again. And I was like, oh, my God, that's that word that I used to be like, oh, that's that, you know, that healing word. That's literally what sort of drove me to it. Mm -hmm. um, but then, of course, the the universe sent me signs and synchronicities of of actually studying the, the course. Um, mm -hmm. So I had hadn't even had a Reiki session prior to me studying to be a Reiki t um, practitioner. Mm. Um, yeah, which was really sort of in hindsight, I'm kind of like, oh, that was bold, but something sort of just pushed me into that direction. Um, I, I think I got about three signs to to go and do the course um, mm. before I actually signed up and did it. So yeah, and that that just started everything. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. right. So, so you went and learned Reiki and you still mm. had a foot in both camps, I guess, yeah. with, you know, still nursing and adding these other modalities. What were you noticing about, you know, really what was changing or what the differences were between this holistic, holistic healing that you were doing and this more traditional, what were you noticing in the people who you were serving and helping? Mm, yeah, it was a really interesting time um navigating those two worlds um what i started to see more and more in the uh, surgery uh lists that i would you know I, i'd do a shift and i'll be in a list for a day and you know that i might get three out of the six patients in that list who were uh experiencing like cancer 
and then cancer would be a theme for a month or so it just seemed like there was cancer everywhere in all mm. the patients who I was looking after and then it was so like people anxiety. know um let's just sort of double back you you were a yes. theater nurse at the start at that time yes an an yeah. anesthetic and recovery nurse yeah 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 um okay so you were noticing so like these sort of themes where there was a lot of cancer diagnosis and operations yeah yeah yep and then it was like uh, I would get I would attract a few client uh, sorry patients mm -hmm. who uh, were experiencing like mental illness so like anxiety and depression mm -hmm. and then I would go through um, phases where I would attract clients with themes of like uh womb womb stuff or breast mm -hmm. stuff so so you know the disconnect from the feminine mm -hmm. um so I it was just sort of like mm, interesting fascinating but you know not really you know putting down a a reason but just mm -hmm. just that uh, observation just started to slowly yeah, take that place. curiosity yeah yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah and how mm -hmm. did that play out in your business journey at that point um well I started to I, I started my business pretty soon after I did my Reiki level two course um and in hindsight now I was pretty bloody bold to do it mm -hmm. um <laughs> I um I started it from my friend's downstairs laundry room at, mm -hmm. at their house in Alex Heads in on the Sunshine Coast um and somehow I built my own website I put up a Google business page I put up a new Instagram page and and somehow I just started getting clients and a lot of the clients who I attracted in those early days were women my age um you know late 20s early 30s and I just knew that the work that I was stepping into was something that was so much needed on a more deeper sort of inner work basis than anything that I could provide at the hospital. Um, and yeah, I guess I didn't sort of really see a correlation between the patients that I was caring for and the clients who attracted, who were attracted to me. However, I did get some patients at work when I spoke to them about Reiki, they had an intrigue and actually came to see me as clients, mm -hmm. which was really, really nice to see that they were sort of people who were open to both yes. spectrums of healing. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Yeah. I just want to double back. You, you were talking about, um, you know, how brave you were to start your business. And, you know, I think for people listening, you know, maybe there's people listening who are new in business or considering starting a business. What was it about your mindset at the time that you know that you needed to adopt to help you get, you know, just to get to take that step? So how did you prime yourself for that? What was the catalyst to be bold and to do the thing? And also, you know, in terms of timing, I'm guessing that you know, what I'm hearing is that you were sort of like, well, the timing wasn't perfect, but, you know, we know in reality when we're in business that there is no such thing as perfect timing. So how did you know that even despite the conditions not being perfect, how did you know to take that next step? And what was it about your mindset that had you, you know, take those steps? Oh, yeah. The... The, f the first thing that just comes to mind is like, I just did it. Like it was like, like I remember fear being there of like, but what if I'm not good enough? What if, what if, what if all these what ifs, but I had a lot of support from my teacher, my Reiki teacher at the time being like, you know, you don't have to be this all and everything for the clients who are attracted to you. Mm even if you are just one little stepping stone on their whole path towards their own healing journey, mm. that is better than you not even being there on their path at <sighs> all. That's such great yeah. advice. Yeah. I just really resonate with that advice. So true. Yeah. 
it was exactly what I needed to hear. And mm. I believe truly that the universe sent me those clients who needed me for that particular part of their path. Mm. Um, and I just had to trust and not let my ego get in the way of making it about me. <laughs> but, you know, what is it that I could offer them mm. in the position that I was within in my own spiritual journey? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. That is that is really um, just some great juice in there for our listeners because, you know, so often, often, you know, I find particularly with women in business or feminine core beings, the, you know, the overthinking is actually what keeps you stuck. And I'm not here to say don't tune into the way that you're feeling or your fears but there are some times where it is a case, like you said, is I just did it. I didn't overthink it. I just did it. And, you know, it's a little bit like the Mel Robbins effect, you know, the five, three, two, five, four, three, two, one, do it, you know, um, just do the thing without overthinking it. And, and also too, that whole idea of being client centric and focusing more on the people who you're for can help you raise that necessity within yourself totally. because our mm. masculine rises to the surface and our masculine mm. takes on that sense of duty that mm. oh I can help this person you know I can I can really I can help this person and so it's almost like our own fear can just dissipate because our our purpose is bigger our mission is bigger um in you know being able to help these people that we know that we're here to help and that's what I hear in that story it's just beautiful yeah. 100% yeah like and I, and I think one big piece of advice that I've really um taken on board from you know teachers who I've come into you know the the honor of being um into contact with so to say is that what what feels right like mm. if if it feels right for you to pursue that do it yeah like if if the mind is getting in the way with the overthinking can you sort of have that awareness to be able to just say oh you know whoa I'm in I'm in my head about this does it feel right yes it feels right to pursue this then bloody do it yeah because you only got you know or debatable one life but you know wow. one life in this physical vessel mm. um yeah and you know and you know I made a reel about this the other day but you know we can always make more money but we can't make it more time like that's it. That's you know it. not in this life maybe in another yeah. but not in this mm. life we can only mm -hmm. ever make more money not more time so you know, but you're right, uh, you know, the, the, our feelings still are important and we can still listen to our feelings, but we do need to be discerning in how mm. much we're going to entertain those feelings, yes. you know. Um, yes. Is it a mm. case of having an awareness and meeting it with curiosity or is it going to keep us stuck? Um, and if that feeling is, no, oh, this is actually really what I want, then finding that courage or that five, four, three, two, one you know, make yeah. a decision and, and, you know, stick to it is, is really incredibly powerful. And it sounds as though, you know, I mean, I want to ask you, like, do you, are you glad that you started when you did? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. What would um, you be doing if you didn't start when you did? Oh, I would probably still be a nurse. Mm. Um, and I mean, honestly, I wasn't, I hadn't been happy in that job for the last four years. So yeah, I probably would have been stuck in that uh, role that I didn't enjoy on a mm. soul level. Mm. Um, just because, you know, oh, there's nothing else to do. Like I can't possibly do that because that's so big and scary and unknown. Um yeah it was just one of those things it was it's almost like I didn't even really need to think about it it just sort of like the the wheels were turning and I had no choice I was being pushed in that direction by something greater than me so 
Yeah. Yeah. You really had a mission and a purpose to mm. that mm-hmm. kept you kept you going. I love that. Yep. Yeah. And mm. you know that that's the thing is, you know, invariably that we might have bumps on the road, but do you know, regrets ultimately you know, I mean, if you hadn't have started when you had, okay, you'd still be nursing, but you also wouldn't have been where you are now because Reiki is like the, you know, sort of secondary in your business, right? Yes. It's like, it's yes. still, you still do it. It's still part it's of still your toolkit, it. but it's not actually mm-hmm. what you lead with. So mm-hmm. um, that's, yep, that's, that's huge. It. So, so yeah. on that, let, that leads me to my next question is, you mm. know, um, I know that you talk about scientific based spiritual tools Mm -hmm. and, you know, let's talk about some of this because people listening who have that scientific brain and, and, you know, are steeped in the science, you know, I want this opportunity for them to hear some of the things that you offer, um, you know, that, that can support in, in, you know, in the spiritual realm as well. So what sort of tools do you recommend that are scientifically based and, Mm -hmm. um, and, and how can we implement them? Hmm. Well, as you know, Shaz, I've um, just finished my first um, signature six-week yeah. program called Soul School, which, which is amazing. Uh, <laughs> yes, I'm so proud of what I've created. It's incredible. Um, we, uh, we I, for those listening, we went on quite a journey as Elodie put did. this program together. But it is just so mm. kick-ass. It's in, it's yeah. an incredible, life-changing program. There's no doubt about yeah. it. It's like my little baby. Um, And, you know, that whole program was, I call it divinely downloaded um, from me spending many days out in nature alone and just letting the creative juices flow. And then next minute, this program was birthed. Um, But basically, because I have a love for the known, knowing, (laughs) um, and the science behind these sort of practices, as, as do a lot of people, as you said, Um, I have studied extensively about the science behind these spiritual tools that we can use in our life to access more clarity, direction and purpose. So these spiritual uh, science infused spiritual tools um, are things like meditation, right? Meditation is both science and spirit. You Mm. can't... um, you know, that there's so many uh, physiological benefits to meditation that we know that it it, meditation is becoming such a a norm, a norm practice now. And there's been loads of doctors who have studied about it, you know, Dr. Joe Dispenza, Dr. Bruce Lipton, they're all about infusing the science and the spirit together. Talking about the brain waves as well, you know, the different yep. states of brain waves and the brain the waves on this, mm-hmm. our physiology. It's incredible listening. Hundred mm-hmm. percent, and it's just it's awesome because all of these spiritual tools have been practiced for hundreds of years, thousands mm-hmm. of years in in yoga, in um, Taoism um you know all in most a lot of cultures all over the world even they've in known prayer. even in prayer they've known about the, the benefits mm. of of these tools so it's only because you know we live in this society that's so governed by um uh the the, the medic the medical mind or medical industry that it's almost like we need to have proof that all of this stuff works in order for us to believe it. But why do we even need the proof if we just feel that it's already making a difference? Yeah. So because we can't charge um, big pharma for it. <laughs> that's it. Exactly. That's exactly right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. So nobody profits you know, from meditation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Nobody profits except mm. for our own soul health and and, um yeah our overall well-being yeah because you know once we all become these self-sovereign beings that we already Mm -hmm. inherently are um then that means nobody can rule over Mm -hmm. us anymore and tell us how to be or what we should be doing um Mm -hmm. which is just anyway that's a whole nother can of worms yeah Um, it is is. (laughs) so okay so we've got meditation yes so so the science behind meditation so how it affects our uh, physical body, our emotional body, our mental health, um, and also the 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 spirit, the yeah. spiritual spiritual aspect of of meditation, mm-hmm. which is 
you know, channeling source, consciousness, God, whatever you want to call it. Um, It's literally quietening the mind, which is the gateway to the soul and the divine. Um, Quietening the ego, which is that, that sense of self, that sense of identity, which without the ego, we would all be one, one consciousness, which we are already. Mm. Um, So that's week one. And then week two is all about mindset restructuring. So learning about how our conditioned subconscious beliefs or programs have been passed on from our parents and their parents Mm. and their parents um, and how those beliefs then um, play a role in how we perceive our reality. Yeah. So I remember learning about this two years ago uh, and it just blew my freaking mind wide open um yeah you don't realize how you're doing something so unconsciously until you become woke to it yeah and then yeah yeah and Um, also too you know when, when you when you start to challenge your own personal beliefs it's like that's shit that you can't unsee. <laughs> exactly. When you start to understand your own programming and yes. it's very hard to not actually call, call yourself on your own bullshit. It's like, yeah, that's the story. Oh my God. Yeah. It's like all of a sudden you can start hearing these other voices in your head that yeah. say story. That's a story. That's yeah. a limiting belief. That's a story. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And it forces you to level the fuck up. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> it really does it really does I, I mean mm. it, but I I know we've talked about this before and and you were just touching on it but it really that reckoning really shook you to your core didn't it mm. yeah yep yep the awakening Tell me about was, that. was huge um so yeah it was about it was around the time that COVID first happened you know that initial lockdown that we all went into um I had feelings of anxiety coming back up. I used to suffer from anxiety a lot um, coming out of a, an a, a emotionally abusive relationship. It sought out psychology for about a year sessions. Um, mm. And then, you know, the I got through it and then the COVID stuff sort of brought it up again. And I was like, oh, here we go, this again. Mm. And then that's what sort of started it all. Um, but the awakening process was literally like, I can't, yeah, unless you've been through it before, which I'm sure some of the audience will have been or, or are maybe potentially navigating one. Yeah. It's like a complete unraveling of a whole uh, reality that you have known. Mm-hmm. So if, if you think of everything that you've ever known to be true and right and real and this belongs here and that belongs there, it's just like a shaky, earthquakey ground, you know, and you're like, oh my God, I don't even know, like, am I supposed to be here? Am I there? Is it safe here? What's going on? What's All actually you, true? <laughs> yeah, what's what's true? Like, what, have I just been sold a whole lie my whole life? Like, yeah. um, you know, and it's, it can be a very frightening thing. However, yeah. when we hit rock bottom like that (laughs) Mm. it's the perfect place to lay a strong foundation um to move up from Mm. so that foundation for me looked like having a good hard look at the people who are in my life did they serve me for my best and highest good what were they here to grow me or like rip me down so I lost a lot of friends um I also, you know, started to question my job. Is this job right for me? Is this job ethical? Like, you know, does it align with my values? Mm. Um, even, even how I perceived, you know, the world around me started to get skewed and change. But it all started with a, um, a huge need to reconnect to myself. I had no idea how disconnected I was um I had been searching outside of myself uh, to everyone else to tell me what I need to do in my life because I couldn't possibly have trusted my own intuition or judgment no way (laughs) I was like who I'm not even qualified to give the advice to myself you know um so it all started with inner child wound uh inner work healing Mm. healing my inner child and 
yeah it just it just the first time I met her it was like what well you're you're a thing still um (laughs) (laughs) yeah yeah she is yeah and I'm such a visual learner um Mm -hmm. it was yeah it was pretty amazing and then through through learning to love myself again and forgive myself for the things that I had or hadn't done or should or shouldn't have done Mm. um yeah just so much self-love self-worth self-forgiveness self-trust had to be re-established again which I had no idea we're lacking um and yeah I I in my opinion those those four things are the the basis of really knowing yourself and and accepting yourself well mm-hmm. and I see this a lot in my clients um who come to me they have all these sort of symptoms of what they're feeling but after you know reiki or holistic counseling it's it's like we work down through the symptoms and we come to these core root subconscious limiting beliefs and a lot of them are mm-hmm. self low self-worth low self-love low self-trust and low um like not forgiving themselves for something yeah. they've done in the past um yeah so wow hmm. so um Let's just go back to some of those scientific based oh, yes. tools. Yes. So mm-hmm. um, tell us some of the others because I know <coughs> that you you go through these in your signature program, Soul School. Yes, um, yes, definitely. Mm-hmm. So, so um, yeah, so so week so week one was meditation. Week two is mindset restructuring. Mm-hmm. Um, so again, I use a lot of resources from books and podcasts that I've read. So we touch on. Bruce Lipton's work, Biology of Belief, Joe Dispenza's work, um, super, uh, Becoming Supernatural and Breaking the Habit of Being Being you. Yourself. Being yeah, you, you know. I love that book. Um, I love there's that another book. book called Why Woo Woo Works, um, which is all about the science behind woo woo practice. Um, Dr. Nicole LaPera's book, How to Do the Work, is amazing um yeah so week three of soul school is emotional intelligence so Mm -hmm. how to tap into our own emotions and feelings and talk to them which sounds wild but it's part of a uh, uh, work called internal family systems um and it's just amazing it's been one of my most profound healing tools is talking to my own emotions because they are really a barometer to your soul um and it sort of ties into work with um louise hay and you know the body keeps the score and um secret uh, language of your body by ina segal and how we can take how we can learn from our physical body as as see it as like a mirror to what sort of being shown from our uh subconscious mind yeah yeah Yeah. um so in that module two I also go into what embodied uh responses are so what it feels like to feel a no in your body and what it feels like to feel a yes Mm. and then that's a beautiful way for us to also figure out what our boundaries are in life and our needs yeah. Um, because all too often we're acting from this sort of people pleasery kind of yeah. space where we just say yes to everything but all really it's a it's a bloody no um yeah. <laughs> but that's really important even to when know. it's a hard no sometimes we don't listen to it <laughs> yep exactly yeah. um then week four is uh connecting to our energy so we learn about the science of energy how and the energy and the emotions module sort of go hand in hand because um emotions are energy in motion that's right absolutely yep and when we're vibrating at a certain when we're experiencing a certain emotion we're vibrating at a certain energetic frequency frequency, which then attracts other like-minded people events situations so this is why it's super important to sort of work through those lower emotions to then be able to vibrate at a higher emotional uh, energetic frequency yeah um so yeah in that module it's pretty fun you know we learn how to feel our own energy how to see energy how to put up energy bubbles um then week six is all about intuition so we learn about the four different intuitive abilities um that we all have as humans um but 
you know some some of us just don't know what our superpower is for me I'm a I'm a feeler and a knower some mm-hmm. people might hear, some people might see. So Claire, Claire Sentience, Claire Audience, Claire Cognizance and Claire Voyant. Yeah. Um, and also how to connect to our sort of guides, angels, past loved ones, whatever, using our intuition. And then the last one is nature therapy. So how we can use nature to um, ground us, to heal us, um, the healing properties of earthing or grounding so walking barefoot on the earth how it yeah. how it works with um, absorbing those those um, those ions, ions the electrons into our body yeah yeah, yeah. which crazy so right like I um in that module I did a lot of research and I learned that we are literally meant to walk barefoot on the earth because mm-hmm. our body soaks up those um, electrons which then go upon the proton ele- electron pump, I th- I'm pretty sure it was called. And then mm-hmm. that then activates um, adenosine triphosphate, which is the ATP, which is the, the like, pew, like the energizer sort of component yeah. in our mitochondria, which then allows us to, to like go and do the things. The so yeah, it's like yes. we literally get energy from the earth. Um, yeah. And you know, it's yeah. so true. <laughs> this is something that, I've become more and more aware of um, over the last few months and I finally put two and two together about why sometimes I feel overloaded, particularly with um, the types of ions that I get from Mm. um, computers and and phones and being around technology. But I live in a two-storey home and for the most part of the day, I actually am on the upper level. So my oh. office is on the upstairs level, the lounge room, the kitchen, and my bedroom is all upstairs. So I rarely go down to the other level, which is the earth. Um, mm. And it is a slab on the earth. And I notice how different I feel when I go downstairs and I walk around downstairs for a while. So yes. I've had to learn that the hard way, but, you know, and even sometimes I still forget and I might think, oh, I haven't been downstairs today. Um, but it really does make a difference. You know, it does mm. make a difference to release that down into the earth for sure. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, because we're picking up these positive ions from, from you know, our conversation right now. You know, I've got this little Bluetooth speaker in my ear, mm. and the laptop, and all the electricity around us. Yeah. We need to sort of diffuse that into the earth. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm, but um, stuff. yeah, it's pretty cool. Mm. So I'd love to talk to you a little bit more about your business. So we've been working together now since August last year, and we're recording this in May 2022. Um, but I want to I want to really tap into the first six months that we've been working together because some pretty profound things happened for you in that first six months that we were working together. What was your business like before we we started together? And how has your business changed in that time? And for the listeners, I just want to say Elodie has been through my Clarity Pillars and she's a member of Solid. Um, We have done some one-to-one work on an ongoing basis, but not for for a hugely long period of time. I think we worked together for about two months Mm. one-to-one. So tell us a little bit about, you know, where you started in your business in August last year and where you got to by, you know, even December, because that's pretty remarkable. Mm, yeah, yeah. So I I probably like started my business. Um, it was probably September 2020. So from September 2020 to meeting you um, in August 2021, yeah, mm-hmm. um, it was like this thing that I did on the side of my nursing job. Like maybe I did two days a week, if that, and maybe had like three clients a week. It was mostly just Reiki and access bars. Um, And my prices were a lot cheaper than they are today. Um, So yeah, it it was, it was very much like just a little side gig. Um, And then I realized that, you know, like, I really wanted to, to, to do my business more and step out of nursing completely, but I just knew that I didn't have the, the structure yet, the tools to be able to do that. And then 
I met um, you or, or I found you on Instagram through a friend recommendation and then um, signed up and did the, the Clarity, the Pillars for over eight week program. Mm -hmm. And it was in that time that it was like a real big slap in the face, like a wake up call of being like, shit, you know, I have just been floundering around. I have just been like swirling as you call it. And I had no, no structure, no, none of that masculine sort of structural um, border around it. It was just, I had no idea what I was doing pretty much. Um, so you doing the clarity pillars definitely helped me to set up that, that, that structure that I needed and to, to, to tick off the things that were important to building a solid foundation in my business. Um, so I remember spending so much time over those eight weeks. It was like a boom, I'm doing this. I'm, yeah. I'm committed. Um, you are and so it just, yeah, it just, it just grew and grew and grew. Um, you know, that, that drive, the, the excitement returned again for, yeah. oh my God, what, what could this be? You know, I do remember the what, first time yeah. that we met and you were, I want to say, um, I want to say uh, even um, for you, like negative, mm. you know, you were like, oh, yeah. I don't know if this is going to work. I don't know if even, you know, I don't even know if this is going to work. So yeah. can you help 100%. me or can't you? Yeah. <laughs> you were yeah. tired. Yep. You were really, you know, you'd been swirling yep. and you're just like, look, yeah. I don't even know. So yep. yeah, it's interesting that you say that, you know, you, that flurry came back, that motivation, mm. that excitement about it. Cause I really feel that. Like I remember mm. when we first met and I thought, oh, gee, like this is, <laughs> this is, um, you know, uh, not, yeah. I mean, I hadn't known you before that, but I thought, wow, like yeah. this is someone who's really like make or break. Like this yeah. is, yeah. this is do or die right now. Yeah, pretty much, pretty yeah. much. I was like, grasping on by my fingernails um yeah so just being like just the container alone that was created with you know all those wonderful women who joined us was half of the bloody help yeah like, the having is so valuable. the community having mm. someone witness me as being a businesswoman yeah. because prior to that I was a nurse um mm. And, you know, seeing my identity shift within Clarity itself was a huge just transformation in itself. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, and then, you know, the system started to be placed. Um, even all of the, oh, uh, what do you call it, the like the financial sort of yep, the numbers, stuff that I'm like, the oh, yucky. <laughs> yeah, the calculations <laughs> module. The number crunching. Like, Oh, yeah God. you started also working with the VA you got some virtual yeah, assistant support yep. got some support there yep um yeah and then after clarity finished it was like well I have to do solid because solid because it's like just and I'm, I mean, I'm like I'm, this has gotten me so far already you know just mm. having that community there every Thursday morning um and Monday and Friday as well and yeah, having you, you know, on tap on Facebook, just able to just tap into any sort of knowledge and resources there. Um, and yeah, Sharon, I, I, you know, I can probably speak on behalf of a lot of the ladies in, in the group, but you just go above and beyond in providing everything for us. Um, it brings, you know, the, yeah, it's just like, <laughs> you feel so supported. Um, so yeah, of course things started to flourish and grow. And then it wasn't until um, Soul School program got uh, created and implemented and 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 provided that birthed. my business has birthed, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> that my business has really started to flourish. So so you know, last week, this week, I've I have 10 clients a week consistently, but whereas, you know, it's not even six months ago I would have probably only had three so it's my energy as well is is I'm believing more in myself and this ability that I you know I am doing a good job I am a businesswoman and yeah that they're just finding me so mm. and I mean yeah. in terms of what that kind of impact 
has. I mean, that's got such a ripple effect. But on you alone, um, you know, if we just talk about, you know, that like your life has literally changed because when mm. we met, um, your income was around about fifteen hundred dollars a month. And then that's a month. And then within six months, you left nursing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yep. So now I live us, off my business. Tell us about that. <laughs> it's, it's great. I um yeah, I've I've moved into this beautiful new house about a month ago and I have the master bedroom and um it's just huge and spacious compared to where I was living in a little granny flat on my own it was very constricting. So so just just that alone, that that expansion I feel in my home and in my business has mm. has I say called in or magnetize the the business to then enable that to keep going yeah um but it's just wonderful to be support yourself like Mm. like I am my own boss like like I woke up the other day and I found myself thinking oh I've gotta I have to you know I have like six clients today oh you know that that initial sort of sometimes you'd mind just goes there and then I thought yeah hold the fucking phone what (laughs) (laughs) it was a moment in time Um, it was a moment in time exactly um but it would just went went to show me how how conditioned you know that old program of waking up oh I've got to go to work today but it was like hang on a second wait I get to be my own boss today I get to help people on a deep soul level that bring me joy and fulfillment um and it's just like the best feeling ever it is yeah Mm. it's amazing Mm. yeah so what does the future hold (laughs) the future holds um I'm really excited to dabble more into the space of mentor programs memberships um ceremonial work as well I'm stepping into a lot of women's work and womb healing um, which I feel is much much needed in our community Um, so that to me is probably what my my future holds you know who knows when that's going to be in implemented but I feel that it's slowly having a, a ripple effect come through in the work that I uh, in the services that I provide so yeah and future rounds of soul school as well of course yes of course yeah and and future future rounds of soul school um you know maybe soul school might be delivered in differing ways in the future mm. but it will definitely still be there because I feel that that work is is so needed yep. yeah absolutely mm. just helping people make that transition from traditional health to holistic health you know and and just holding their hand every step of the way is Mm. I mean that's a joyous journey in itself (laughs) exactly that's it exactly and who better than Elodie Joy to walk you on that path all right so Elodie um just before we wrap up uh, uh, there's three questions that I ask all of my guests and uh, the first one is how would your parents describe what you do for a living (laughs) It usually gets a laugh. Yeah. Um, well, my parents would describe me as doing, um, I guess, healing healing work. They don't. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure if they know exactly to the extent of what I do. However, my brother. <laughs> my, <laughs> I'm laughing because I know what Elodie's going to say. <laughs> My brother thinks I put crystals up people's buttholes for a living. So, <laughs> so I just have to laugh at that every time because I think this work can be so serious. Um, and, you know, it, seriousness. And that's has not a knocking place. that as a practice, by the yeah, way. Yeah, 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 yeah. And <laughs> I exactly, absolutely like, don't doubt for a second that that yeah, works. That, that's a beneficial <laughs> practice, exactly. But, you know, like having a lightness about this, yeah. this sort of stuff too is, yeah. Totally. Yeah. 
and and uh, that's his way of describing exactly. uh, what you do when really <laughs> he probably has NFI. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> what has been the most joyous part of your life and business journey to date? Oh, like I know it sounds so cliche, but honestly, just the transformations I see in my clients. Oh, it's, it's like, it, it's so tangible and palpable when someone you see comes to you feeling a certain way and then having some sessions with you and then seeing the transformation and change in them. It's like, you, you just know that you're healing for all of humanity. Um, and, you know, of course, like we all need that little bit of, um, external sort of uh validation in a sense to know you know okay I'm doing the right job you the know feminine like, like, craves to be seen <laughs> the, the, the feminine craves to be seen exactly it's and she wants and, to be and, seen she wants to yeah. be recognized she wants to be totally adorable. yeah and 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 in witnessing that it's it's sort of just like oh okay cool you know like I'm I'm still doing I'm still on the right track you know yeah. this this is this is still for me like I've, I've still got it kind of totally. thing <laughs> Yeah, yeah yeah so yeah and um, I mean mm. you know just the fact that that is the most joyous part of your life and business journey to date really speaks to the nature of business that we're in and that mm. is is that it's almost like this isn't a choice this is a calling <laughs> like this is this is not negotiable this is yes. like this is our truest part of joy in our life that brings about all of the other riches you know that life has mm -hmm. you know in store for us it's just totally so beautiful I love that and to, can yeah. totally resonate mm. totally resonate that transformation mm. um you know I'm <laughs> delighting in yours Elodie every day every day <laughs> thank you um and um to finish up you know where can our listeners find and follow you so you can find me on Instagram, on Facebook, on my website, on via email. So my um, Instagram is Sunshine Holistic Wellness underscore underscore, and every, everything you can find me across everything at Sunshine Holistic Wellness, um, and yeah, that incorporates all of the modalities to that I do. So if you want to follow me on Instagram, I upload helpful reels, um, videos touching on. Um, topics uh, you know that that we sometimes aren't even aware of um recently i did a real you know five ways to shift stuck energy in our body five tips for one. meditation oh, yeah yeah um and yeah, i like I to keep it funny, with the meditation you know? actually looking towards yep. the third eye Never the third that. eye for focus yeah mm. i popped up a reel there about um the first time i met my inner child which is a little bit of a uh, a more light-hearted um, sk skit that you can watch um, yeah yeah mm. amazing well jump on over and we'll make sure that we link all of that in the show notes as well so um, so if you're driving or walking or out and you don't have a pen handy right now or your phone where you can um, look Elodie up we'll make sure that we've got it in the show notes Elodie, thank you so much for joining me today I just want to say you know it's been such an honor to have you as a client um, but also more as a friend and you know just somebody who just brings so much joy and and also has just in cre created such a beautiful business um, you know it's just it's really it is a, an honor to know you and also an honor to serve you so thank you for the privilege and Aww. um and and thank you for the you know thank you for sharing sharing your story because I really believe that your story is incredibly powerful. It, it is it is such you know it is such a, a great story to be told and shared time and time again um, that can change hearts and minds and lives. So um, please keep thank sharing you. it. I love it and. Thank you. Um, and, you know, as, as someone who's come from, you know, an institutionalized background, like, mm. you know, um, <laughs> nursing, teaching, right. They're one and the same mm -hmm. um, to somebody who stepped into, you know, soul business entrepreneurship. Um, you know, it's just, 
it really speaks to me and I know that it will speak to a lot of my listeners. So thank you for being here. Oh, thank you, Sharon. I Thanks appreciate so all of the help you've put in and to helping me grow and flourish in my business. Such a pleasure. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> Thanks, thank Elodie. you. Thank you.